Welcome to this tutorial for After Effects. Today you are going to learn how to unravel a path using Dynamics. We are going to use Newton 3, Overlord, the Mobo Utils, Deep Glow, Connect Layers, and Composite Brush. I'm Valentin from Motion Boutique. Here we go. So let's start by creating a new composition using this uh, video file that I've done using my phone. I'm going to track and stabilize this footage using Mocha. So first let's draw the area we are going to track and make a few adjustments. Then just uh, hit the, the tracker button. You can also uh, uh, display uh, the, the stabilization. Then when it's done, you just need to go back and set it those two buttons and save and you can close Mocha. Now let's create the track data. And I'm going to use CC power pin to deform my image. To, uh, to apply the stabilization. Let's link the power pin to uh, my trackers data. And now we can see that my shot is stabilized. So now let's reverse this stabilization. So first I'm going to uh, pre-compose this uh, footage and I'm going to take all my elements and create a new composition. And now I'm going to reverse that stabilization. So I'm going to take back my uh, effects, copy, paste them to this new composition and you will see that it will reverse my stabilization. So now I've got two compositions, one that is stabilized and the other which is the original one. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to now do my key. I'm going to remove that green screen. So now let's create a garbage mask. And then we are going to apply key light to remove the screen. Let's pick the green color. And let's uh, add this compositing option that will only allow key light into inside my mask. There are now a few adjustments to, to do to completely remove the green screen. Okay, so now we are set. Let's add a, a black solid that will be my background color. Okay, so now it's stabilized and I have removed my green screen. So now let's move to the fun parts. Let's use Illustrator and the brush tool to create my type. Neon. The most important thing is that I only need the path. Okay, just a few adjustments. And let's use Overlord to send it to After Effects. And it's important to use this to your option. And let's push the selection to After Effects. Let's change the color and the stroke. And now I'm going to add vertex to my path. I will need them to add more precision to my simulation inside Newton. So let's do this for all the letters. Okay, now I'm going to need to select all my path. And so I'm going to use the mobile utils. I'm going to use the select same properties in composition so it will select all my path in my composition at once. I want to take control of my path. I need to control this path using objects 
that are linked to my vertex. And those objects are going to be controlled by Newton. To achieve this, first I'm going to use the script create nulls from path. It will create nulls from the vertex of my path. And I'm going to use the points follow news function. And look, it will create all those nulls that are linked to my vertex. So if I move one of these null, it will also move my path. But the thing is that Newton doesn't interpret nulls. So we have to transform those nulls to something uh, Newton understands, like solid. So let's create a very small solid, like 10 pixels. And I'm going to uh, just delete it because I just need the source. I'm going to select all my nulls using the select label group. And now let's replace the source. So now instead of nulls object, I've got solids. And if I take one of these solid, it will still move my path. For better results, I have now to recreate my letter. So I'm going to remove the shape layers and I'm going to select the controllers of one letter. And I'm going to use Connect Layers Pro to recreate this path. Now let's do this for the other letters. There is a trick for the letter E because the letter E is based on two paths. I'm going to use this plus function so I can add a path to an existing one. Okay, so don't uh, forget to refresh the list and select chain three for the letter E. And don't forget to uncheck the plus function for the next letter. And if I move one of the controller, it will also move my path. You can see that the letter O is not round, so I'm going to change it a little bit, check the curviness function and set it to auto Bezier tension. Let's select all my letters using the label group color and move it to the top of my timeline. Let's move and adjust the size of my word. So I'm going to create a new null object and link all my controller to this null object. And if I move this null object, it will move my world. And of course, I have to adjust the position of my world so the end of my end letter will be under the my fingers when I will pick this letter and unravel my path. Now that I have adjusted the position and size, I can remove this null object, but I'm going to create a new null object. And with that new null object, I'm going to track the position of my fingers. So let's animate the position and I'm going to uh, track the position of my hand manually. And at the end, I'm going to add an expression, a loop out continue. So the position of my object will still move even if my hand is out of the screen. So now let's parent that null object to uh, the last controller of my path. And if I make a preview, you will see that my path is moving according to the position of my hand. So now let's pre-compose the chains and the controllers.
And one last important thing is to replace the source of my null object hand by a solid. Now let's select each controller for each letter and assign a specific label color. You will see that it will be very useful when we will use Newton. And let's hide the chain because we don't need them inside Newton. Okay, let's uh, launch Newton. So first I'm going to select the two last objects, a hand and my last controller. And I'm going to add a distance joint to these uh, two objects. Now I need to recreate the chain for each letters. And this is where the labels that we have set in After Effects are going to be useful. I just need to select one object and hit L and it will select objects with the same label. Then I just need to add a distance joint. Here there's a little issue. I need to remove the controller hand from my selection. And I'm going to do this for every label. Let's add a distance joint to the ends of my paths. Now I don't want my objects to collide with each other, so I'm going to use the collision group and remove the group A from collide with. And I'm going to set the body type of my objects to dormant, so my objects will remain still before they have to move. But there is one object that needs to move. This is my hand object. And I'm going to take the animation from After Effects, so I have to set the body type to kinematic. Let's add some precision to my animation and set the sub-steps to 9, for example, and let's hit the preview. Great! So let's uh, render this simulation. And now I have this new composition with my simulation. And I can see it if I unhide my chains. And so the trickiest part has been done. Let's replace this composition in my stabilized shot. And I can also make a preview in my uh, final composition. Let's change the size of the stroke. And again, I'm going to use the mobile utils, the select same properties in composition to select all the stroke width of my letters. Let's change the line cap and the line join. And now let's animate the colors of my letters. For this, I'm going to use the hue saturation effect. I'm going to animate the colorize hue. Let's add an expression to loop this animation. And simply copy paste this animation to my other chain. And I'm going to change the keyframes to offset the, uh, this animation, this color animation to my other letters.
let's add some glow and I'm going to use deep glow from plugging everything. I'm going to duplicate my neon composition to add more density to my color. So now we'll need a, a little more work to, uh, to put my hand uh, above the, the neon effect. I only need to work on the part where my hand is leaving the screen. I'm going to create a guard batch mask. And I'm going to use composite brush to only keep the color of my hand. And here is the first version of my animation. I think we can make it better, so I'm going to change a few things. And I'm going to also add some light wrap around my hand. You will find the link for a tutorial of this technique in the description of the video. Et voilà, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.